Hi, and welcome to Wellness Master Q&A. I'm your host, Jason Cronin, and today we're going to focus on one of the eight dimensions of wellness, and that is physical wellness. And our guest today is all about physical wellness. Brian Padone started boxing at the age of 13 and fell in love with the sport. He had played other sports, but nothing was compared to the thrill of going against someone else in the ring. He said, my father used to drive me to different boxing gyms, and I hopped around with him to many different places. It was a great time to bond and learn what it meant to grow up. He attended East Strasburg University and started a boxing club. And it was then when he realized what it meant to be a teacher. He fell in love with training others, especially kids who didn't necessarily have a fair chance. Then he ran his own boxing gym for 10 years in Pennsylvania in the Poconos. And after that, he went on to become a head boxing trainer for an MMA professional who went on to compete on Dana White's Tuesday night fight events. He moved then to New York City where he became a boxing trainer and then ultimately started his own boxing gym while he was living in New York. He again catered to training kids. He began to develop a product called the Quiet Punch, a home boxing solution. He is now working full time at Quiet Punch and he's taken on seven investors to grow his company and he's rapidly growing each day. He now sells over an average of a thousand units a month and is growing an online user base. He said his true passion is helping others along the lines of fitness and staying sharp and being happy. Let's welcome Brian Perdone. Thank you for being with us. I'd like to start off by asking you, what drew you to become a boxer for all the listeners out there? Yeah, so I was always into sports when I was younger, like baseball, basketball. But something about boxing, my dad was really into boxing. So that kind of uh, was the start of it. So he was kind of, you know, talking about boxing and it was kind of something we could relate to. And when he took me to one of like a, a boxing gym, I just kind of like fell in love with the sport. It was just something that was so, I'm not very tall. So basketball wasn't that great. And I was trying to find like a sport that I could really fit into. And I really, I was drawn to the sport of like boxing just because of like the one-on-one -on -one aspect to it and how it's like, really, it's about you. So like when you get in there, it doesn't matter um, your background, uh, where you come from, anything like that. It's like everything is kind of like a, it's like an even playing field, especially like in the boxing ring itself. So it was something that's really like a, it was a, just a, it definitely drew me to that sport. That's awesome. That's really great. I started at age 13, which is a yeah. great age to get going. And I'm assuming it kept you out of trouble. It did. No, it did. It totally did. Also in, in high school when I was there, then nobody like messed with me too. So it was like, <laughs> it also added to it. Yeah. <laughs> Tough Italian kid, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, were there any professional boxers that you looked up to, the inspiration like, to get into boxing? Mm -hmm. No, I always loved Evander Holyfield. I loved watching his fights. Um, I kind of followed him when I was younger, watching him fight Riddick Bowe, and I would say Mike Tyson, and you know, just watching, especially him coming from like a cruiserweight to heavyweight, watching that journey, and especially as amateurs, I was always inspired by Holyfield. I felt like he was just such a um, such a terror in the ring, so like quiet. I really like the idea, like he's quiet outside the ring. I didn't speak much, but when he's in there, he really shows it. Unlike Mike Tyson and, and even a person like Tyson was kind of afraid of Holyfield in the ring. And, you know, it showed during those fights. Exactly. And um, that's excellent because, because you know, Mike Tyson gets hungry in the ring all the time, right? Yes, right. It's up his ear. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's interesting. But if people that don't know about boxing, how do you become a boxer? Like, what do you do? What's there to do? How do you start? Yeah. So it's, um, you know, it's kind of like any other sport. You have to first learn the fundamentals. Um, you use a lot of like footwork. So it's kind of like learning how to jump rope if you're kind of light on your feet. And then you start learning the combinations, like learning the jab and the cross, learning your defense, where your hands need to be, where your feet need to be placed. So there's a lot of technical aspects that come to it. And it's a lot of repetition. Uh, like Bruce Lee said, you know, you do something 10,000 times, you know, you start to become like, that's what somebody's feared. So it's like really learning um, the discipline of the sport and then breaking it down into little sections. And then learning. So when people come in, like I've had, uh, when I used to have the boxing gym, you know, kids would come in and be like, oh, I know how to fight. It's like fighting is not, that's not the same thing. And as you know, as a martial artist, you know, fighting is not, um, like fighting on the street is not a skill. You know, it's such a difference when you come in and have to learn an actual craft. So it takes a lot of time, many, many years to like kind of learn what you're doing. That's awesome. Yeah. That, as a martial artist, the same thing and has kept me out of trouble. And uh, you think you can fight and you get in the ring, you're like, oh, that's not happening. Exactly. Oh, that's that's not technique. <laughs> and I, I remember this, Jason, like, uh, so when I had the gym, I used to have kids come in, they'd be like, oh, I'm a fighter. And we put them in the ring and, you know, they wear headgear and stuff, but they would burn out, I would say, like, I don't know, 20 seconds in and be completely gassed. They'd throw like everything they had. 
And then you could do whatever you wanted to them. And they'd be like, oh my God, what is like, what is going on here? This is not what I'm used to fighting wise, you know? Exactly. And the main thing I want to get, you mentioned about personally and professionally, what has boxing done for you both uh, personally and also professionally? So I know you really excel, excelled really well in the professional arena. Yes. Um, it taught me a lot of discipline, but then in the professional side, especially when I went to New York, um, I started training kind of white collar workers and what I learned after working with all the kids and I was obviously getting paid for it. So it really helped me professionally. I think I, I was treated a, a certain way, um, you know, coming in and like teaching that sport. So it was something that was like a, a discipline. I'm glad I learned for, from a young age, like to older. So it kind of uh, opened up a lot of doors for me, especially the boxing aspect of it. My background is like in computer science. So I'm like a kind of like a computer nerd, but people don't care about that. They want, you know, <laughs> the boxing is more exciting than computers. That's great, because I know you can actually, on the technical side, you're very good, and it's also on the ring, So, but that computer science probably helps you with the fighting as well. It does, absolutely. No, you're right. It's analytical, right? You're absolutely right. It kind of breaks things down, and that's why I'm used to that, like, analytically, and then they bring it into, like, the boxing world. It's kind of neat, because, yeah, it's everything can be broken down into segments. That's great, and also, how do you become a professional fighter? I know you train MMA fighters, and they're on TV, and that must have been an awesome experience seeing your pro fighter on TV after you're training them. Yes. No, it was really cool. And the professional game was so different. I was always used to the amateurs. And then when this guy came in, he was amateur already as MMA. And then we t- turn pro to turn pro, you get to, you know, apply for a license. So it's not like really that difficult. It's really about like anybody can kind of be a pro, but it's like, how successful can you be as a professional? A lot of people say, oh, I'm a pro fighter. Yeah. Maybe you got in there and got paid a couple of bucks, you know, to fight, but it's really, I think it's a different level, as you know, like, you know, the, the higher levels up or the people we talk about, like Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, a whole nother level to professional there's a huge professional like underground like especially boxing that most people don't even know exists you know because they're not on television they they don't make much money so like to be a pro is not difficult but it's really like to be a successful pro that i think is uh the difficult part wow yeah i didn't realize that there's underground professionals I, didn't, I thought they were all like the tv guys and there are so many fights Jason, that don't get televised like they're all like you know tournaments and as you know too as a martial artist there's a lot of tournaments that happen same thing for boxing i just they don't get televised these are like kind of like they're kind of working their way up. You know, when you see guys on television, they've maybe had like 15, 16 fights already, you know, and undefeated or whatever that looks like. But all those other fights that happened beforehand happened somewhere, you know. That's excellent. That's just great because uh, um, I grew up as age 13. I started martial arts as well. Same yes. thing about, about 13 years old. I was picked on a lot. I was bullied a lot. Mm-hmm. And I figured out a way to build confidence. Yes. Um, and Bruce Lee was my, you mentioned Bruce Lee already. I was about to say Bruce Lee was my inspiration. And I read his books, the Geo G Kendo. Yes. Um, have you ever tried martial arts of any type and with boxing? Like a mix it up? You know, I, I've done a little bit, a tiny bit of jujitsu. I'm, I'm saying tiny, very specifically, like one or two sessions. I've always been with my MMA guy and I watched him go through all his sessions, but I just came in for the boxing side of it, you know? So I've always watched it and I'm very interested, but I've never really stepped into anything but boxing. That's great, though, because I know it would be a mixed martial arts. You need the hands and the feet and also Absolutely. the grappling and all that Absolutely. fun part. Yeah, so the guy that I trained, he, hands. Yeah, the guy that I trained, he was, a, he was a wrestler. So he wrestled at East Stroudsburg University and then Edinburgh. He was like a Division One wrestler, but then he le- needed to learn how to, you know, use his hands and then obviously jujitsu. So we had all the different trainers that we kind of like put together. That's great. Um, I noticed you started with training kids. At what mm-hmm. age can kids start training boxing? You know, at one point we had a, a little girl that was uh, nine, nine years old. So they can start any age. I, I would always be hesitant to put them in the ring to spar. I was like, I think sparring is really like maybe like 12 to the teenage years. I don't like having little kids in there because they don't really understand what's happening. And, you know, I don't think it's fair, like a nine-year-old hitting another nine-year-old. Um, they don't comprehend what's going on yet. I think a little bit older, just to know that it's not like a really a fight, you know, and you're learning technique and skill. So I'm not a huge fan of putting little kids in the ring. I think training's great. The mitts, the, the bag, combinations, footwork. I think that's awesome. But I feel like co- actual contact, I always feel like a little later. Yeah, I totally agree. Same thing in martial arts because they're yes. more familiar and their body mechanics are there. Exactly. Yes. What wellness benefits do kids achieve for training in boxing? If some of our listeners want to get kids into your boxing or whatever uh, uh, area they live in. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think for kids, it uh, does. It definitely teaches them discipline. It's a really nice outlet, especially for like aggression and frustration. And I think it's also just fun. I think kids really enjoy it. It's something they can focus on. I've watched a lot of kids get very focused. Just like they can focus on video games. They also can focus on something that's like healthy for them. That, yeah, the, and that's, that's the biggest thing. When I grew up, it was all about health and wellness. That was the main aspect of it. 
Yes. And it wasn't about the fighting. It was about being yeah. healthy and being a body aware, self-esteem, confidence. Absolutely. Yes. A good, I have a question for you. This is almost like a Jeopardy question. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a fun game show question. If somebody asked you, what is Southpaw? And what's the difference between Southpaw and regular style, style stance in boxing? Sure. Yeah, so a southpaw usually stands for someone who's left-handed. So if they're southpaw, they're going to have their right foot in the front. And if they're orthodox or the standard stance, their left foot is in the front. So typically, it's like usually if somebody is a southpaw, they're more powerful with their left hand. So everything is kind of like mirrored. And then if you're orthodox, you're using your power with your right hand. So usually for a boxing stance, um, I believe karate too, it's like, you know, you want your power in the back. That way you can, you know, drive all your force in. So usually a southpaw will keep the power in the back, which is their left hand. So left hand's in the back, and then a right hand or orthodox, the right hand's in the back. And you have to vary it up just in case. You almost switch stances sometimes. Yes. Just in case of southpaw versus the regular stance. I, as martial arts, try to get good on both sides. I love it. I love it. I so think you mix it up on each side. That's amazing. So amazing. And it's very rare, especially in the boxing world, where someone can switch up, like, effectively. Like, at the current day, like, Terrence Crawford is probably the only one out there who can do it successfully. Most people will focus on one discipline, you know, one side. Because you know how long it takes to train, like in one side, yeah, and then that equal time on the other side too to be like equally effective on both sides. That that is true. Yeah, my my left side is always weaker than my right side. Still, even though I train sure. both sides. Sure, sure, sure. Throughout your training or business, have you dealt with any anxiety or internal ups and downs? The reason why I ask is some of our listeners, and the purpose of the podcast is to help with wellness, uh, to get through stressful times in their life, ups and downs. Was there anything that kept you kind of internally like? I have to break through the boxing helped me break the anxiety or the stress or anything like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think boxing, especially at a young age and then uh, kind of growing up with it, it taught me a lot about dealing with anxiety and like uh, awkward situations, especially like going in. So like walking into the ring, I can still remember. I still remember the feelings of it. Like the anxiety is so high and like walking in, stepping up into the ring and people watching you. So kind of like in, into my professional life, it didn't make meetings and like meeting other people as stressful or worrisome because at the end of the day, when I meet somebody, no one's going to like try and punch me in the face or try and physically hurt me. You know, I mean, it depends, depends on the situation, but most of the time that's not going to happen. So nothing is as stressful as that. You know, you're kind of like overcoming something with yourself and then having it into like the real world, you know, no one's going to attack you. So it's like, so you're like almost prepared for like more than, than most people would be. That's really good. And uh, one thing is uh, you went to the same college at ESU. And seeing you grow up through the years and from, from school all the way to your business as a coach. And then um, I trained at the Muay Thai school where you were teaching boxing yes. at one time and you had different locations. Yes. And I learned a lot about the Muay Thai there and I've seen you boxing with the kids. Yes. And um, I was always intimidated to go, like I was watching the boxers. I'm like, man, they're pretty good. I was like, little <laughs> kids beating up with this big guy. Right. <laughs> Brian, please let our listeners know how you developed the quiet punch and what it has meant to you and your athletes that are training with it. Yeah, sure. I came up with the quiet punch at this time about seven years ago. I was training people in the city, mostly business people. And uh, usually I had homework assignments for them, but I knew when they went back to their apartment, they were not going to have the ability, like the equipment they could use, like a heavy bag. So I was coming up with an idea, like in my doorway, I had the pull-up bar already. And I was like, I wonder if I can do like some sort of bag with a, a pull-up bar on the top and the bottom. So I was playing around with it. And then I came up with the idea for the quiet punch. I was playing with it. I thought it was really neat. Obviously I had no idea. I've never done any product development before. So I took that idea and I found like a, a prototype company in the States. And then when I found them, they got me to a place in China to do like production. So it's been a really long process. Um, I really made it for like boxers, like to, to practice and to train. And then what happened was when somebody saw it, that oh, was really cool. Like, I think my wife could use this or my kids could use this. So it really started to like broaden the, uh, the reach of the products. And now we're at a point where like, you know, we're selling very well, but it's really like the audience keeps growing. So it's a way for me to kind of like what I did in person for people, like for teach boxing. Now I can teach it like basically across the world. So people can have their products set up. They can watch the videos and like kind of follow along. That's excellent. And what features does the quiet punch have? Cause I know it went through many different trials and, different advancements and now is an app involved and yes. videos involved and and a yes. leadership and all, like people followers and yeah exactly <laughs> it's everything. Well, no you're right you're right it's definitely uh it, it's morphed a lot i mean when it first started i was really just a bag it was a bag i had maybe like one youtube video and then people were like can i like i need to know learn more how to use this so but i went through so many versions of the bag itself the bag is now i think on the fourth version of it as well as the bars i learned a lot from how to do the tension rods the first version I had didn't stay up very well. This one is much better now. 
So I've been doing many versions of that. And then I worked on a sensor. So I've actually have a sensor that attaches to the back of the bag that counts your punches and measures your force. Um, it, it creates like a leaderboard, kind of like the way Peloton does where you can kind of like compete with yourself and compete with others. So at this point now it's like a fully like um, connected uh, you know, solution. So people in their house or apartment can like, you know, turn it on and then be connected and then follow along to the live, we have live workouts, we have Zoom workouts and, you know, all these other things that happen with it. That's excellent because I watched many of the videos there and you got a lot of people, you're able to talk to them while they're doing the actual video, which is really yeah. cool. Yes, yes. I saw that you have live videos and live trainings and yes. on Facebook and all over. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm definitely like to know how, how do we buy one of your quiet punches? And I know that everyone that buys one does love it. They have it in their house. And I guess the theory is that it's quiet so that you don't make a lot of noise. Yeah, correct. That was, you don't take down your house. <laughs> exactly. That's the whole thing. Yeah. It was more like the structural part of it. I knew like with a heavy bag, if you're going to have one hanging from your ceiling from the rafters or one with a big base, like water or sand, I know how much noise that makes, especially in an apartment setting. If someone's below you, they're going to hear a lot of rocking and rattling. The quiet punches is just tension rods in the doorway. It still makes noise when you punch it, but it's not as loud and it doesn't make any structural. It's nothing shaking like a speed bag or something that's going to you know, create a lot of uh, vibrational noise. So that's kind of the idea. And if you want to get it, it's just quietpunch.com. So we have the website there and then we have all the social media that's tied to it. That's a perfect, it's easy, easy to remember. Too. Easy to remember, right? Yeah. Most people know how to, uh, exactly. It's not a complicated name. Yes. And I know it's been a long road, but how did you, it, was it worth it for you? Do you think it was worth it to go through all those stressful days of developing something? Because I know I love inventions and prototypes and I definitely look at you as like the actual person I want to be like. I, I was like, wow, I have an invention for the million years, but have never done, have never put it together. I Thank put you. together, but never get to the next level. For all the inventors out there, yes, was it worth it? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. yes, no, it was worth it. It's still worth it now, and it's learning how to like kind of I think enjoy as the process goes. Like I'm still getting further along. I think I'm way further than I was before, but it's like I think it's trying to enjoy each moment as you go because it really is. At the end of the day, Jason, there really is no like, oh, I made it. There's no made it moment. It's like these things keep on changing, and like you have more things to do. And more things to worry about, but it's like starting to like just appreciate the things that happen as you're doing them. But to go back to your point of, of inventing, yeah, it's really difficult. It's like you create something, but like, how do you actually number one produce it? And then after producing, like, even if you got like a prototype and you can actually manufacture it, how do you then advertise it and get people to buy it? I mean, that's a whole nother world where it's like really difficult. Some people have such amazing ideas, but it'll never come to fruition, you know? So it's like trying to get all the pieces together. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, but when the pieces do come together and it does start working, it's definitely like a, a great feeling. And has the COVID situation helped your uh, company grow? Cause I know a lot of fitness companies are booming right now. Yes, it has. I mean, sadly to say, but yes, it has because a lot of people obviously can't either leave their house or they're not going to gym. So this is definitely, we've seen spikes without a doubt. And compared to like, there's another company called Fight Camp. And obviously, you know, Peloton is a mirror. So those are other home fitness solutions, but they're a lot more costly. So even though it's not like super cheap, ours is like a 250 or 350 model, but it's still way more, um, you know, way more affordable than a lot of the other home fitness products out there. I agree, definitely. And it's more boxing uh, oriented, which I like. It's a physical contact. It's not like air boxing. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's a lot different. Is there anything else you want the listeners to know about you or the Quiet Punch that I forgot about? Um, no, I think you covered it. I mean, my main thing is like even creating the quiet punch is really just making sure that people get in, uh, you know, an ability to, to try boxing, to try it out, to, to like it, and then get used to like the trainers and be like, oh, this is really cool. I just want more people to know about it. And as you know, you know, out there now in the public, we have like Logan Paul and Jake Paul, there's like all the Paul brothers and the YouTubers who are now boxing. So we're getting more exposure. Like people are like, oh my God, like boxing so cool. So it's just trying to get, I think, more awareness about the benefits of boxing and not so much about the, uh, the, the, the fighting of it, you know, and hurting people. That's not the point. It's really like the, the health benefits, you know, and that's the important part for me is like letting people know how, what the health benefits are for boxing, both mentally and physically. And overall, what your wellness journey, uh, do you feel that boxing was the main key to your success overall when it comes to your health and wellness? Yes, I definitely do. I think for me, boxing really, I, it caught my attention. I know for a fact like that has been my driving force. And even teaching classes and teaching like health and wellness, it's always centered around boxing. So that's like, that's the thing. It's always about boxing for me. And that yes. mind body connection that you have. Absolutely. It's a lot of mental, not just physical. No, it's actually more mental. I would say it's more mental. And even going through the journey with the pro MMA fighter, it, I spent more time with him, honestly, Jason, on the mental side than our physical training. It was more about like preparing mentally, 
um, you know, always trying to kind of make sure that he felt like, you know, confident. So that was more of the, I think more time went into that and more phone calls and everything else and actually like doing mitt work. And, and, and the fact that your computer uh, technology background, has that helped you design the app that you have or that was someone else that made that for you? But no, you I did. No, absolutely. Actually, I did the app. So everything that the app wise is all done by me. Yeah. Wow. That's yes. great. I'll be calling you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> That's excellent. But um, I'll, I'll definitely be attaching all of your information to the podcast and your awesome. bio so they can read it as well as hear it and mm -hmm. all the contacts for the Quiet Punch and the, the Facebook pages so everyone can see that and awesome. contact you. I, re I, really I really appreciate your time and today and I definitely keep us posted on new products or things that you're doing in the market and I would love to see more of that. Yes. And thank you so much for sharing your wellness story and the success you have is great. And Hey, Brian, thank you very much. Have a great day.